Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to give dyeing yarn with black beans another try. There are a few things I want to do differently this time. Uh, one, when I take the liquid I'm going to label it off the container. And so I'm using two containers so I can have more liquid so we're more likely to leave that brown sludge behind. And the other thing is that I'm going to do all of our work at room temperature. Finally, I will be setting up two different room temperature dye containers. One that has 200 grams of yarn that were treated with an alum mordant, and then the second that has 200 grams of the same two fiber types that was not treated with any mordant. I am adding eight cups of water to each container. And I also want to say how much I appreciate all the feedback you guys gave me in the comments of my last video. I really did not know what I was doing, um, and so I am excited to give this another shot. Because last time we definitely did extract really beautiful blues and purples, we just, you know, ruined it by heating it and so watched it turn brown. Now I am going to cover these up and set them aside for about 48 hours. I will come and stir them periodically, but I will make sure that they have at least a couple hours to settle before I start removing, stop, start removing the liquid. And I will, I might even add a little more water um, as we go, but I'm feeling optimistic. I simmered our yarn in some mordant on the same day I added the black beans to the baths. So these are going to sit in this Ziploc bag for 48 hours before I add them to some of our black bean dye. The two yarn bases that we have today are Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool and is the full skein that we did last time. But there's also a skein of Knit Picks Swish DK, which is 100% Superwash Merino. We saw last time that this one absorbed a lot of color. So I am so curious to see what we'll end up with. Now, there's a chance that I should be starting with way more beans. There's definitely that chance. Uh, and so there's a chance that we won't end up with a deep saturated color because, well, there's going to be a lot more fiber in each pot. And I suppose technically half the amount of color, but we'll see what we get and it's going to be a learning experience. The yarn with no mordant is not going to sit in pre-soaked for two days before dyeing, but I will make sure to pre-soak them at room temperature at least an hour before adding the yarn to the black bean dye. I pre-soaked some Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn and Knit Picks Stroll worsted weight yarn in just some plain tap water at room temperature for over an hour. And now I'm going to take all of our yarn and carefully place it inside like a, just a shoebox plastic container because this is where I will eventually add the bean extract and let it sit for a couple days. When I did my alum mordant, I used a hot technique um, that you can see in my dandelion video. When later that day I went to try to dye some of the yarn with avocados, I was a little perplexed by the results. I didn't rinse off the yarn in either case, and I don't know if any excess mordant water that may have been present could have altered the results at all. The yarn there felt a little felted, even the superwash one, which again was a bit perplexing. Uh, but anyway, I am this time going to rinse it a few times before putting it in a very similar shoebox-like container for when we add the dye. So hopefully this will help give us a clearer look between using mordant and not using mordant when we dye yarn with black beans. Uh, I have a feeling that I might be tempted to try a cool mordant technique uh, in the future to sort of set things up in a pot, let it soak for a few days without applying heat. Honestly, I think that that might be a little easier. 
So I'm just really excited to see how this will go. And now we are going to start extracting this color and pouring it onto our yarn that has been treated with mordant and that has not. And I'm going to be doing this in a ultra scientific, oh no, there are some beans in there. Uh, just careful scoops. Trying not to dredge up anything. Oh dear, I do want to move these beans. Maybe I need to go a bit slower. Uh, there's still some beans in there that are coming up. I'm trying to be very careful. I know we don't want to disturb the sludge that is in here. So maybe I'll pour it over my hand to catch beans that come out. I will say, I'm seeing a little bit of blue in our yarn with the mordant so far. So that is exciting. So I've heard that one of the reasons why I ended up with a brown last time was from the sludge at the bottom. And that that is not something that you really want. So I am doing my best to avoid uh, disturbing the bottom as much as I can. And it's possible the amount of color in here will not be exactly the same. I am going to do my best. Oh dear. Let's give you a little bit more. I'm going to do my best to be as even as I possibly can. But I am going to continue. Goodness, I'm not even measuring how many cups are going on to each one because I think ultimately it doesn't matter. I do want there to be enough liquid to cover up the yarn in the end. I think if anything I want to err on a tiny bit more on our non-mordant yarn. Okay, I might call it for this one, at least for now. Maybe what I should do is add some more water and then extract like in a couple hours again. So the big difference right now is I see some blues peeking through on our yarn that has mordant. Um, it seems like with time things are shifting to be more and more blue, but I, again, cannot be 100% sure Trying to catch the beans in my hands. Okay, I am going to keep adding color in this very careful way to add as even coverage between the two as I possibly can. And then I will be back. The difference between them is pretty staggering. Like that corner looks purple. These ones look more red brown. Oh, I am so excited. Starting with the yarn that has no mordant, I am going to press, there might be some sludge in here, like as I press I see some like sediment. But certainly we have a good coverage of our yarn. And I'm now going to do the same thing on our yarn that has the mordant. So I have no idea if the blue is like an oxidative process or what, if there's just sludge. Um, okay, I don't really want to touch it much more because we've definitely got some good blues going on. I mean, even here it seems like there's some. I think rather than adding more water to these right now, I'm going to put the lids on, let them sit for a few hours, and I'm going to go add more water to our beans to sort of extract more color that way. Yeah, I think if I let these beans sit for about six hours, then I can remove some more liquid and add it to our soaking yarn. It has been a couple of hours, and the one with no mordant, it looks like our superwash is turning a little bit grayish. 
And the other one, it's not as brown as it was, but there's definitely more blue, I think, in the uh, Swish DK. But look at the yarn with Mordant. I am amazed how different the colors are. Uh, I think that, again, the Swish, the Superwash Merino, is this beautiful blue. But we see these cool purples in the Wool of the Andes. The colors are awesome. And I am just unbelievably amazed with how well we have a difference here. There's no question that the mordant is shifting the color. And I'm also curious to check the pH. Okay, so the pH on that blue side is probably about a six. So a little acidic. Checking the more purpley section also seems to be about a six. Um, maybe it's slightly more acidic over there. Eh, hard to say. And then in this one, maybe it is a little more, oh, just a hint. I would say there's a slight, slight pH difference between the two. The one with the mordant is slightly more acidic, maybe closer to a five, whereas the no mordant is closer to a six. I did lift up the yarn earlier, in both cases, whoa, look at that color difference on the sides. Um, and I did move it around earlier, but ooh, look at that reddish. Um, there's definitely space for more liquid. So it has been five and a half to six hours since we initially set this up. And I did add more water to our black beans. And I'm once again going to just take the surface of it and use this to increase the liquid in our two containers. And once again, I am attempting to add the same amount of liquid to each container by doing a scoop in one, then a scoop in the other. I will be really sad if my doing this messes up the blue and purple color that I have going on. I don't expect that it will ruin anything because I'm using uh, the colors and the ex and the liquid in the exact same way that I did earlier. So even though it feels like the colors have struck really, really quickly, I am going to go ahead and cover these and let them sit for well over 24 hours because that's what has been recommended and I really want these colors to stay and I don't want them to just rinse out. No mordant and yes mordant. Uh, so, so the mordant definitely did affect the pH but we're gonna let this sit and I'll come back. After two and a half days, let's look at our yarn. Can you tell which ones had the mordant in there? I really hope that the color sticks around these one with the mordants. But I have to say, I am, oh gosh, this is slimy. Ugh, can you see that texture? Oh man, it almost is like, oh dear, gelled. Oh gross. The runoff with the yarn that has the mordant on it is less jelly. I mean, I guess in there it doesn't feel as thick, but on the yarn, it definitely feels coated. Ooh, okay, I'm gonna set this aside. Some people said that this will smell horrible, but honestly, oh, this doesn't feel slimy at all. Oof, look at those colors. I really hope. A lot of it sticks around. Okay, it looks like that bright purple may not stay. The purple might be an artifact of the purple that we see in the yarn. Hopefully the blue will stay. But yeah, as I squeeze out the yarn, we lose some of that purple, or not some, but a lot of that purple hue. Um, but as we rinse it, there's no question that we have a beautiful blue in our superwash yarn. And it's tonal, it's definitely tonal because they were fairly crowded in here. Uh, 
So that's too bad. I was really hoping we'd see that purple. So I have a feeling that our non-superwash yarn might end up looking more of a bluish gray. But after these first few washes, I'm going to set this aside and let's check out the no mordant yarn. This yarn had no mordant and no heat. And something, like we use the same beans, but something about how these colors dealt with, I don't know if it was the mordant, there was a slight pH difference. Something about the difference between these two jars gave us like a very different texture on the yarn. And adding a fair amount of the soap. Some people have said that the smell of this process isn't great, but it smells a little off, but not bad. I just feel like there's going to be a lot of washing here. It feels, um, yeah, I can still feel like a slimy texture. And there's definitely some color in the rinse bath. Maybe I'm going to bring us to some warmer water now. I mean, the yarn feels fine. It's just, I know that this is going to need a lot of rinsing. Okay, as for the color, it's looking like we have a really nice gray, sort of warm gray on our superwash, and almost a tannish color on just the, well, the Andes works with weight yarn. As we are rinsing it, I'm not sure if you can see, we're getting this sort of greenish runoff. Yeah, the superwash run almost feels a tad bit felted, probably from all of the extreme process of the mordant. When I was mordanting, I think I might try a cool mordant process next time. I sort of like the whole process of setting the yarn up and just leaving it there for a little while. Um, but, uh, the fibers themselves, they might be sticking together a ton, but you can still see all the flies on all the yarn, which is something I always like to look for. And I know that I will be able to restain this easily. So, I am going to go ahead and wash this until I can get the water to run clear. And there's absolutely still purple in our Wool of the Andes yarn. Um, it doesn't look like it's gone completely blue. It's just not as bright. Like there are blues and purples in there. So even with this bleeding that we are seeing, I have no doubt that we will have color, um, a mostly bluish color in both of these yarns, which is fantastic. Here is the finished dyed yarn that we created with black beans. I am so, so happy I gave this another shot and made some tweaks. This is a case where the addition of a mordant has made a huge difference. With the alum mordant, we got this beautiful, beautiful denim blue. Without the mordant, we still on the superwash yarn got a really nice gray, so it's still a very beautiful color but the mordant really amplified and shifted that hue in a lovely, lovely way. Here we have our finished wool treated with the alum mordant and the yarn that was done without, and our 100% Peruvian Highland wool and our 100% Superwash Merino. I love how different the results are between the two types of yarn. I mean, they're pretty extreme. We're used to seeing from some of my previous experiments that a superwash yarn does a lot better than a non-superwash yarn, even without mordant. But I wasn't expecting to get such a huge difference that we see here. In our Wool of the Indies yarn, there are these purple bits on this yarn, and they sort of come and go in sort of a this random way. And honestly, I'm not sure why they are in those regions. Maybe it has something to do with how the colors were uh, placed in the bins that I used for the dyeing. Maybe it has something to do with the mordant process. I'm not really sure. I just know that it's 
beautiful and actually looks relatively balanced. I think there's some of that purple all the way through the skein. Now let's talk about the texture. The Superwash yarns, I mean, the, the one treated with the mordant still feels really soft. It doesn't really feel felt, slightly felted like the one that I did in the avocado experiment did. Uh, but there is definitely a textural difference between the two in a way that's really hard to describe. It's still really, really soft, but it doesn't feel nearly as cloud-like as the one that had no alum. Once I am done filming this video, I am going to go re-skein all of this yarn off camera. Not because of any felting concerns. There's definitely some variation in the tones, especially in the yarns treated with the mordant. But yeah, I just really think it would make the skeins a little bit less messy. And yeah, I don't, I'm not sure what it is that's making me desire to re-skein these. I definitely don't think any of the yarns are felted. And texturally, the black bean skein treated with alum um, is in much better shape than the one from the avocado dyeing. So this is another reason to maybe try some room temperature based techniques in the future. One other note is that I used two pounds of black beans to dye 400 grams of fiber. I think that I absolutely could have doubled or tripled the amount of beans that I used. Not necessarily easily because of the space to soak all of those beans, but I definitely got a gray that is a lot deeper than the Superwash Merino yarn with no mordant uh, when I did this originally. And that's mainly because I had a lot less fiber. I think I only had 100 grams of yarn with two pounds of black beans. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I am having so much fun uh, giving this all, and uh, giving black beans another shot and playing around with some natural colors. I've probably mentioned earlier in this video that I'm interested in, in trying some cool mordant techniques where you soak the yarn over the course of a couple days versus an hour or so at a higher temperature. And I'm curious to see how that might affect the overall texture of the yarn in the end. But I know that there are so many things growing in my yard or things that we could find at the supermarket that I think would be really, really fun to explore. Not all of the natural colors I have been trying in this week have as extreme a result between the no mordant and with the alum mordant treated yarns. Some of the results are a lot more subtle, so it's really interesting to see where it makes a huge difference in the pigment. Now certainly, if I were to go and explore other types of mordants, there could be um, more shifts that we can get on the colors. There's a lot of research and books out there that show the differences you can get from alum mordants, iron mordants, and a whole lot of other kinds of compounds out there. But I don't know if I've seen as many comparisons of with mordant and without. And so I'm not sure quite was that what I was expecting, but I think I was expecting increased level of saturation all the way around. And these hue shifts are really surprising and wonderful to see. If you enjoyed this video and want to help support the content, uh, go and check out the Chemnitz Creations Etsy store. My shop is filled with yarn featured in my dyeing experiments, including some other natural dyeing videos that are already on the channel. So you should head over and check it out. Of course, there's a lot of other yarn dyed with acid dyes and a wide variety of bright and wild colors. Um, I always list the dye type in the item description. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.